Phoenix Suns. I thought they were very competitive. It was a back and forth game. Um, you know, Luka did his thing with 32 points, eight rebounds. Um, and I thought they was competitive with the Suns, and I think the Suns are a much improved team. We saw that last year, um, you know, when they went on that run, um, you know, to be that last uh, play-in game, and they went on that winning seven, eight games. Real, so they have talent. Uh, so it wasn't like they were a sorry team. And then you go against the L.A. Lakers. Those are defending champs. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you come against two really good teams when you first really come fresh off the block, you know. And uh, Lakers, we know, they they added more inside help and they kind of dominated us on the board. And I think that's kind of still been a kind of an issue, even getting Willie Cauley-Stein back now since he wasn't, you know, opted out because of the bubble. Uh, rebounding in those first couple of games, it looks like they've been, uh, you know, still struggling on the boards. Um, so then when you get against these Clippers, I noticed that everybody hit the boards and they jumped out quickly. So that was exciting. The first two quarters, they went on those blitz, 36 points the first quarter, 41 the second, and they were running and gunning. I liked seeing that. Um, so I like the team. Um, I like to see more rebounding. And I definitely like how Josh Richardson is balling right now. I love how he is. That's really uh, a person that I've been uh, kind of keeping my eye on these first three games. And, yeah. uh, you know, once we get a KP back, um, you know, I, I like the Richardson um, uh, with the Luca, and it makes me feel a little bit better about Hardaway because I like how Richardson slashes and, and brings another dynamic to the team. So I'm excited about that and see what's going to go on later down um, in, the, in these games coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, rebounding was suspect through the first couple of games. And I think Luca even kind of addressed that saying, you know, if, if we box out, if we actually put forth more effort in that department, it might be a different story these first couple of games. Now, I don't think the Lakers game would have turned out any differently because, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the rebounding was huge. It was like 53 to 27, and the Lakers had 35 second-chance points compared to zero for the Mavericks. Right. It's like the, the widest margin in 25 years when one team has zero second-chance points. Mm -hmm. So just a ridiculous split there in that regard. And, yeah, the Lakers on second-chance opportunities were like 12 of 14 or something like that, like just an obscene – efficiency even in that department so it's like not only are you giving up the offensive board but then it's almost like you're, you're defeated a little bit you're giving up easy looks or high right. quality looks and uh you know lakers converted it the lakers got better in the off season they're defending champs as is and then they got even better i think significant i would argue significantly better they added mm -hmm. the reigning six man of the year and the runner-up six man of the year and against us they had 23 and 18 i think respectively which is ridiculous that they can have that much quality off the, like we talked last year about how deep the clippers were and they they're mm -hmm. deep but the lakers i are think super are super deep <laughs> yeah and obscenely deep like their top two guys are obviously better than the clippers top two guys and now they're deeper than the clippers as well so i don't know how the hell like they haven't even had to lean on uh, a lot of the great things even though his best years are past him uh what like mark gasol can bring mm -hmm. to the team he hadn't had to right. again he's barely had to lift a finger so far for them exactly and he's going to be a guy that comes very much in handy, but yeah, much Especially better showing. Down the stretch. Yeah, exactly. Much better showing for them in this last game. It's the first time in NBA history that, and I should clarify in the shot clock era that a team was up by 50 at the half. That mm -hmm. is ridiculous. They literally dropped a Luka Doncic Jersey on them 77 to 27 mm -hmm. at the half and there, there's a lot of things to, to kind of factor into that, right? Like you don't have Kawhi Leonard, right. so obviously an all otherworldly defender and offensive machine for the Clippers as well. And they didn't have Marcus Morris Sr., which in addition to kind of denying us that little revenge message right. with uh, Luca, which I wanted to see what James Johnson was going to do. I wanted mm -hmm. to see the first I, opportunity. I, it was, it, it was going to happen. It was, yeah. I, I definitely feel like it was going um, – I was anxious to, you know, see that too. Uh, because I felt like it was going to happen just because it was going to be, I mean, it was going to, it's been talked about, it's been perpetrated. Uh, he got him in the off season and, and you know, we're going to, uh, we would have probably seen about that life. It probably would have been a, a, a force bump or get a rebound mm -hmm. and an extra elbow just to kind of start it up and get it riled up. So letting everybody know that, you know what, you got that off last year, uh, but it's not going to happen this year. Yeah. We didn't try to just get a tough guy. He can play some basketball too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But that, 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 beating up people and all that stuff. You know what? Now you're going to see it on the other end, and we're not going to be the soft guys that you feel like you can push around. And so I definitely uh, 
like that aspect. But I, I, hey, I don't care if they had Ka- Kawhi Leonard or whoever they didn't have. The fact that uh, you know, I remember all that last year, and we came in and uh, busted their heads like that, um, and everybody was getting off, and we were killing them on the boards. That's what I really liked. We were really attacking them on the boards, getting yeah. second, second, getting second chance opportunities, and it shows that when the uh, same way the the Lakers did Dallas. The, the the Mavericks did the Clippers, and it shows just like what Donna says, box out, be aggressive. We can hit them boards, even though we're not super big. If we play play concerted effort because Kali Stein had six boards off the bench, nine point six boards, you know what I'm saying? And, and I needed to see more from him, especially on that rebound. Johnson had eight rebounds. So you got those guys to kind of do those things, and that's what they need to do going forward. Yeah, rebounding was, was huge. Uh, like I said, they had only had 27 against the Lakers the night, uh, two games before, two days before the game prior. Um, and they had 32 at half of the Clippers game. So very immediate. Like they started that game out on a 10 2 run, had mm-hmm. a 10 0 run, an 11 0 run, and a 12 0 run in that first half. And in the midst of all of that, they, they crashed the boards well, they defended, they created turnovers. And I do like, like Luca, for how much focus he said he was putting in the offseason on his shot, mm-hmm. it's not showing right now. And I don't mm-hmm. mean that. Like, some, I understand sometimes you work at something and it's going to go through, you know, some kind of darker periods before it starts to kind of break through. Mm-hmm. And right now, that's where he's at. I don't know what his exact percentage is from three in front of me. I want to say it's something like abysmally low right now through three games, like 18% or something Mm because he's had like an O for five and O for six and like a two for five, I think so far. So not good for Luca shooting the three, but what I do like, he has uh, increased by, let's see, going into this last game, he had increased his drives per game, which was already in the top like three, last year Mm -hmm. Uh, he increased by three extra drives per game and then I felt like he was relentless attacking the basket especially in that first half when it mattered Mm -hmm. uh, against the Clippers we saw in the bubble dude when he attacks the basket it doesn't matter if they have Kawhi Leonard Marcus Morris whatever he's going to get there at will and he finishes 72.6 percent last year of his shots in the restricted zone like the dude is automatic almost if you get if he can get to the cup and it doesn't matter that he doesn't have the explosive explosive athleticism or you know the the blazing speed he knows how to work his body how to work the angles and he's savvy he's got great footwork and can get to where he wants to be and finish so that's what he needs to do and i do feel like in part him seeing the struggles from the three-point shooting aspect He's dialing back just a little bit on that front and focusing more on, let me just get to the basket. Yes, it means I'm going to have to work a little harder. Yes, it means I'm going to have to absorb a little more punishment, but it's better for the team, particularly when KP's out. It's Mm -hmm. better for the team if I do this because it gives us a better chance to win. Exactly. I I totally agree on that, Um, especially just like you said, it doesn't matter who you are in this league any longer. Let's just keep it all the way real. It doesn't matter who you are that's guarding him. He's good. He, if when Luca wants to go to the hole, he's going to the hole, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. He's he's too big for you, and he just has that like he's not like the super fast guy, mm-hmm. but he just has that way to get to the basket. He's deceptive with with his handle, and I think that's what it is too. You look at him and he looks so damn slow, um, like he like. How are they? in my head? I'm thinking like, and I'm thinking they're probably thinking like, this dude ain't even going fast. How can I not stop him? But when he does that power drive with that euro stepping, you're not getting in his way, and he's easily making easy shots. Those aren't hard shots for him. And as you said before, it's it behooves if you like that word him to do that. Why KP is out? Don't settle for the three pointer because it takes away your game, especially the way the team is right now without KP. We don't have that guy that's really going to come back and really, you know, hit us with some guaranteed points. I know Richardson has been hooping. We got Hardaway in that. But when he's taking them three-pointers, a quick three-pointer after we get a possession and drive down court and shoot a quick three, that's not helping the team. That's going to put us farther in the hole. You put the team in a better position when he's going to the hole because he's creating shots not only for himself but for his teammates. And you're possibly getting fouled and going to the free throw line as well. And Luke has been great at the foul line this year. Like that, that's a huge step up for him. I think he was like 76% last year, but you saw in his first couple of years in the league, he's like among the top 
five most missed free throws in the clutch. Mm -hmm. And that's not a list you want to be on, even though that list weirdly contains guys like LeBron, Harden. Uh, I'm trying to think of another, there, there was another significant player on that list as well. Um, so it, it's weird company to keep like in that it's a bunch of good players that you wouldn't expect that. But regardless, that is one area that he's been much, much better this year. I think he was 10 of 12 in the opener. He was seven of eight. Then I think the last two games, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So he's getting to the line about the same clip he did last year. Last year, I think he shot nine free throws per game. So mm -hmm. same clip in that regard, even though he's driving to the basket more. And the difference is he's finishing at the line. He's much better through the first three games. And he looks more confident because we have seen Luca for as great as he is, he does have a tendency to get into his head a little bit when it comes to his shot. Free throws, absolutely you see it. His body language will definitely show it. He'll slump his shoulders if he's missed a few free throws and you can just see he's frustrated and he's letting it get into his mind. And he's even acknowledged it's mental with him at some points when it comes to free throws in particular. So maybe if he can build on that a little bit, you know, if you're, if you're making these mid range shots, which you've seen him incorporate a little bit more and you're connecting at the line, I do feel like at some point that three point shot will round better into form, but in the meantime, don't force it, just let it come and uh, keep building up yourself this way. Cause he, the first two games he was, he was all right by his standards. Yeah. His, his all right is better than most of the league. I get that. Right. There are people who, if I'm critical of Luca in any capacity, think I'm just taking like an unfair shot. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no doubt he was fantastic yesterday, way better than he was in the first two games. And that's the Luca that Dallas needs. That's the nature and the burden of being a superstar is you basically have to be that guy most every night or else it's going to be like, Hey, if the team struggles, it's kind of on you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's, there's a lot for this team to, to try and figure out moving forward. Obviously we don't know exactly when KP is coming back. They're saying, Carlisle is saying it's a matter of weeks, not months. Well, okay, that's good, I guess. But I was kind of expecting days, not weeks. Right. So that kind of becomes a red flag because are, then we're are talking you, are like, you concerned, are you concerned about this? Because, you know, it's, uh, you know, they were talking about the injury concerns before he came over. And mm -hmm. then now we have this. Is this something that you're worried about, well, you know, um, going forward? Is this going to be something consistent with him and his career with us? I do think you're going to have to manage around this as best you can. But it's a, non, it, it's, it's a contact injury that he suffered. If it was non-contact, I'd be more concerned because that mm -hmm. just implies the body can't deal with it at all. Um, obviously, he's still going to have to play physical. And so you're still going to be you're like, hey, that's a silver lining, I guess. But it's not like it just absolves the, uh, the issue there. So I think in this case, it's not the same knee as the ACL. It was a contact injury, and he did play for a game and a half, I want to say, on it, or at least a full game on it, and was great in that game. Mm -hmm. So I tend to think that he is recovering well and that the Mavericks are just being abundantly cautious because they know how important he is to their ultimate finish line. And the whole point is like, hey, we got the defenders, where now Luka doesn't have to go out and wear his ass out 72 games this year. And, uh, for this team to to make the playoffs, we can have it where we have so so Luca Knights or KP and Luca both are doing their thing, but not having to kill themselves, and we could still have a good potentially even home court advantage in the first round playoff team. And so I think that helps, and I think Dallas will be even more cautious than we saw last year because I think I think after January last year like when kp broke through after he had that like 10 game absence with the uh soreness in the right knee right. i think when that happened and by the way that's the same knee he ended up having the uh the meniscus tear in right. in the bubble but uh i think once that happened when he started to break through i think they kind of set aside their their really cautious approach with him because you remember early on they were arresting him all the time right he, he was missing always missing uh, one of the two games in the back-to-back -back. usually the second game of a back-to-back -back, well guess what this season's going to have more back-to-backs than last year had so mm -hmm. that's going to be something to watch and as he kind of started to break through the rust and really take over and dominate getting suddenly up to like 29 and 10, as far as his stat line, you know, in, in a window, not, you know, in a snapshot, not obviously the season averages, 
But once he got to that point, I think they were, I think they were tempted. They got a little greedy where they were like, ah, man, he's on such a roll right now and it helps this team and it's helping Mm us kind of stay in this because we're right now hovering in that like six to eight range, really Mm -hmm. more six, seven range at that point. And so I think they got a little bit uh, greedy in that regard, hoping like, all right, well, let's just hope that he can play through it and that this is going to work out. And then, you know, you eventually see him break down a little bit again. So Mm I, I think they're going to be abundantly cautious. He's on year two of a five-year deal, and that's not something they can mess around with. I would like, obviously, for it to work with KP long-term, where we're not just talking about the rest of this deal, but even a deal after that, potentially, especially mm-hmm. when he's 25 years old right now, or is he 26 now? Whatever, 25, 26 years old right now. You want to hope that you can have him for the long-term future, but you also got to see uh investment wise what that picture looks like as far as his health and if that's something you can reliably count on moving forward right i mean i like i said i i, I feel you with that um you know like i said it, it's something i'm going to um, continue to look at because well, i mean we need obviously we need a kp mm-hmm. he is vital to this organization i mean that's why they did what they did as far as getting him from the knicks and uh you know they got to still be cautious um i just you know i'm I just hope this doesn't be something not long term because, like I said, we that's a you got two building blocks, and I like the players that they're uh, putting around them. Um, I still want I know he, he's not going to be anything dominant, but I still I know it's early. We I still want I need more from Willie Cauley Stein. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like we need more from our big man right now while KP is out. So Dwight Powell, I don't expect them guys to come out there and get 20 and 20. You understand what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, y'all need to come in there and get them boards. They got stock Kyle Stein for a reason, <laughs> is to get rebounds, play defense, and, and show that presence. And I need to see that from him, and I just need to continue to see more from uh, Powell. You know, uh, Max, you know, he's going to do his thing. I like Max, uh, but we still need to show some inside force while KP is out. Uh, because if we don't, them games will get out of hand against us and there'll be blowouts. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying for sure. I think uh, I think Willie Cauley-Stein definitely has a lot more he can show us than he's had the opportunity, whether it was last year when we acquired him uh, from Golden State or, you know, he obviously, as you said, opted out of the bubble. And so we haven't had a chance to really see him kind of show us what he can do yet in Dallas. We've seen glimpses here and there. And I think he's rounding into form better now. He played 18 minutes yesterday, nine, six, and two. Uh, he added a three-point shot, at least a, a respectable three-point shot, it looks like, in the offseason. That's phenomenal mm-hmm. for him to add that because especially with this team and how important spacing is, mm-hmm. that's a major asset he can bring to the table because Dwight Powell's not a great three-point shooter by any stretch. Like he's, right. an, he's a barely respectable three-point shooter when he's on. Um, and Maxi, he's he's pretty respectable. Maxi shot a, I think, a career high thirty eight percent last year from three, and you know a lot of that's just the quality of the looks he gets from playing alongside Luca. But he was ice cold in the bubble last year too. So spacing is important. But I think Willie Cauley Stein brings the best combination of those traits, uh, especially with KP out uh, for that front court role. Like he can stretch just a little bit where we haven't seen a whole lot of it yet but I think he will be able to do that. He's got great athleticism and length. And, you know, that, that there was a play he had in the first half yesterday where it's a, it's a fast break opportunity, and Dorian Finney-Smith is trying to leave a dump-off pass to him in transition. It's a terrible pass. It's low. It's outside. It's not the kind of uh, gather or catch you expect a big man to make moving that fast. And yet he corrals the ball, doesn't even have to put it on the deck and ends up dunking on Zubats. Like, great, great play. And that's something that maybe in his absolute peak prime pre-injury Dwight Powell could do. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's something Powell can do now. And that's just the kind of thing where it's like you look at that athleticism and you're like, okay, let's try and get more of this. Let's try and find more of what he can do now. He's not a great shooter. Uh, Collie Stein's not but I do think he brings a a good blend of skills to the table in that regard where they can get more out of him. You also mentioned earlier, James Johnson. Now he's more of a four than a five, obviously, but uh, a great asset, not just an enforcer for them, but you know, he, he had a pretty good showing as well. The other day, 20 points, five or sorry, excuse me, 20 minutes, five points, eight rebounds, not a great shooter, but he is someone that can do a little bit here and there just to make you, 
kind of respect it, at least have to account for it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he brings a lot of defensive intangibles, a couple steals forced in that. Obviously the eight boards is good. And so you've, you've got a lot of interesting pieces, I think in your front court. Yes. And Uh, yeah, it it works together. Well, sorry. What were you saying? No, I was just going to agree. Like, I I like that. I like that James Johnson because I love, I love how he plays defense and he's an aggressive guy on the defensive front. Mm -hmm. Um, And we definitely needed that. You know what I mean? Because we were missing kind of that. He kind of gives you that tough nose attitude that, you know, the Mavericks need. We needed that kind of that grittiness. Um, so I like the the front court, the sizes, the heights that we, you know, got around. They're all kind of like that mid-height range, the 6'8", the 6'9", 6'7". Yep. You know what I mean? We have a lot of those type of players on the team, but they're versatile players. So you can put them in different parts of the game. And that's what I like, how the Mavericks are building that. Um, and like you said, um, it's early. It's only what? Three day, uh, three, three weeks, games. three games in. Um, so yeah, just like you said, with, with the Willie Colley Stein thing, his athletic ability is what the Mavericks needed as well. Powell, you know, he, you, I like when they do that uh, one two game with him and Duke uh, Donkins when they throw up that Luca when they throw up the alley oop. Um, they're real good with that with Powell. Um, and I think he can really get that off of Stein here soon. You know what I mean? I think that can want to be one of the one two bang bang things. And so, you know, I'm excited. You know, I, I'm, I like how even though they lost the first couple of games, like, people are like, oh, let's trade this. Let's do that. We don't need to do that. Calm down. Okay. Yeah. Calm down. It's only three games. All right. And, and and you played some good teams early. It's not like you played some, like I said, bummy squads. You played the defending champs. And then you played the Clippers, who were the guys. Although they didn't have Leonard, they still have the Clippers. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way we kind of ran through them, I think that gives confidence uh, heading forward that, hey, we play our game, we stay on the boards, we box out like our general says, Luca, uh, we'll be in every game. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, the, the team has a good mix, I think, of long rangey, versatile defenders. You know, we saw times in the Lakers game where Johnson was checking LeBron on the perimeter and doing mm-hmm. a respectable job. And it's like, that's a nice asset to have that you can put out there. You know, you got a lot more, I think, while I think Dorian Vinnie Smith and Richardson are your two best perimeter defenders, you've got a lot of guys who you feel more capable putting out there. You don't have to necessarily, you might still do it, but you don't necessarily have to put against the Clippers in a normal matchup where Kawhi is playing. You don't have to put Maxi on the perimeter for the majority of a playoff series against Kawhi Leonard. Like, when that was your matchup, you felt a little, you're like, I'm, I like that Max, he's reasonably capable of this, but I don't like that we're asking our backup four or five to check one of the best offensive, like forces of nature, basically in the NBA in the postseason, you know, for an entire series. Like that's, that does not feel good. So yeah, I like what they, I like what they're bringing to the table. I think it's a much better Mavericks team now than we saw last year. And I think the offense just needs time to kind of build that rhythm whether it's Luca rounding into proper regular season shape, whether it's KP getting back or whether it's just integrating the new guys, you know, Richardson has been great to start the year. Oh, I, I love him. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was, he was huge for them at the start of yesterday. Mm-hmm. He goes eight of 13 from the field, four of eight from three, 21 points in 27 minutes. Dude was a flamethrower to start the game. Man, he and was good too. Yeah. And he's great on both ends of the floor. Yes. Like I think so he's, he and the Mavericks, declined to work out a new deal before the season started Mm -hmm. and i think it's just him kind of understanding like look i'm gonna have probably a career year here with luca Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i don't want to sign something now when i can Mm -hmm. probably get more money he's gonna be unrestricted free agent now i think dallas wants him carlisle has said from afar he's watched him a couple years thinking he would be a perfect fit next to luca and he is he is. He absolutely is. He'll <laughs> he take. He is. I love it. I love it. Like I, I've been. He. He's the. I love that athletic ability. You know what I'm saying? It's just something mm-hmm. about his game. And even Carlisle saying it that they would be a perfect match. They are. It's kind of like how you we had Dennis Smith Jr. Remember how we were? They they were together, and you mm-hmm. were like, if Dennis Smith can play off ball and be the athletic guy to look at, it'd be nice and sweet. Now you got a guy, Josh Richardson, and he's got some good size on him too. It's not like he's a six one or six two guy athletic he plays like you said both sides uh both ends of the floor he can you know shoot the three can take you to the hole he's versatile um can drop off some assists and he'll get in your face on defense man and he can run that floor 
Luca gets out on that break, he's right there running that four with him, man. And I, I, I love that addition, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. And he played it smart because he is going to have a career year, and he's going to make some more money playing along Luca because that's what Luca does. That's why our free agents want finally. I'm not saying they never want to come to Dallas, but mm-hmm. I think there was that little period where they're like, eh. But when you get a Luca on your team and he's doing them things, you're a player, and especially if you're in the backcourt, and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to play with this because I'm going to have some good years because he's going to make me better. Yeah, absolutely. And it's worth noting as well, Richardson, he's 27. So he's still young enough that you certainly are not shying away from investing in him for a big deal. He was also the 40th pick in the draft. He played all four years at Tennessee. He's originally from Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, Like the last place I lived in Oklahoma uh, was like 10 minutes away from his high school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's, he's a local dude for sure, as far as it relates to me. And uh, so this is a guy who's never, he's got good money before. Like he got a good deal from the heat and everything. And that deal's now wrapping up, Mm -hmm. but he's never gotten max money. And I do think that's going to play a factor. And it makes sense that he would make this kind of calculated risk. And I think it will pay off because he should have a career year next to Luca. He's a career 35%, I think three point shooter. Mm -hmm. Also before him, that was the case with Tim Hardaway Jr. And Hardaway Jr. Became a 40% three point shooter playing alongside Luca last year. And now Hardaway will probably also get big money this off season. So yeah, I look at things like that and I'm like, yeah, Richardson's probably going to get a max contract this summer. Hopefully it's here in Dallas. He'll, you know, the Mavericks have his rights. So that's huge. Um, I believe when I did the player profile piece on him uh, prior to the season starting, he hadn't yet announced that he was going to opt out of next year. And Mm -hmm. so I was, kind of thinking like oh the Mavericks got him through next year as well this is a great deal but no he's he's opting out so that's going to be something Dallas has to figure out but I think by all means if he really if he stays healthy and he is the perfect fit that he looks like he is next to Luca you lock him up and you run with a trio of him Luca and KP and you build around that because as long as you build a good team with length and athleticism versatile defenders it doesn't really matter. You don't have to have a third superstar necessarily. You mm-hmm. just have to build smart. Right. And when we remember when we talked about when they had KP and I said, eh, I don't, uh, Hardaway, he cool, but I don't want him to be that third guy. This is a guy that I don't mind being a third guy and letting Hardaway come on. You know, I don't want to be a third guy depending on Hardaway. I like this kid better, and I think he's just going to be a, a really, really good fit, and he's just going to blossom this whole year. Um, I mean, he's already shooting, what, 52% from the floor uh, with Luke already, mm-hmm. 53% from the floor, dropping almost 17 a game early. I think his rebounds and things of that nature will go up. He's averaging four boards a game. I think that may can go up and maybe another couple rebounds. And as I said before, um, you know, Luca brings that out of him. He's got to steal a game. I think he can maybe get up to two steals a game because, you know, he can be opportunistic when you got Luca with you. Maybe you can gamble a little more when you got Luca with you, you know what I'm saying, and hitting that fast break. So I I just feel like he gives another athletic element to the team and he can, uh, you know, play some good defense and he can, I think he can play like a guard, you know, a guard, a point guard, he can and guard a, you know, a shooting guard and maybe, uh, you know, a small forward because he he's lanky. I mean, he has long length like that. So like six eleven length. Yeah. 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 So I, that, that comes in handy. I mean, I play ball and you, even if you're a little bit shorter and you have long arms, it definitely helps you when you're playing the game. So, um, I love the addition. I want to see how he's going to do uh, the rest of this year. I'm excited for him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, with the Mavericks as well, like they have an opportunity to to really put something together, I think, this year for a I, – I don't know. I, I think they have the roster that I always say health permitting can win a playoff series for the first time since the 2011 finals. Mm -hmm. I think they've got the athletes to do it. I think you've obviously got the star power with Luca and you've got a a very, very capable, unique uh, second man in KP as well. So if they can manage that and part of being able to rely on this defense and things of that nature, you can do it. But even, you know, we, we talk about the defense 
even the offense is starting to show some new things a little bit. Mm-hmm. The two years with Luca at the helm, you know, we, we know like, oh, well, Luca's here. So the, obviously the offense has been very, very good. It was the third rated offense last year. But in terms of efficiency, it was the most efficient offense in NBA history. Mm-hmm. And that's partly fluxed by the modern game relying more on threes, just the way the, the scale calculates kind of skews preferentially towards the modern era than it did previous eras. But regardless, the fact still remains until we have a new system. That's just the reality of it. Um, And despite that, the Mavericks have not in Luka's first two years been a team that's very good at the fast break. And that never made sense to me because it's like, dude, you got a guy with that kind of vision and passing. You see the angles and stuff he can do, like throw and all that. Like it doesn't make sense that on a roster full of athletes and versatile guys, you can't be better than the bottom third of the league in terms of fast break points. And that still remains to be seen this year, but you did see a glimpse in the Clippers game yesterday at halftime, they had 20 fast break points and they were getting breakaways for dunks and, and ones left and right when they started running away with that game in the first quarter. And that's, I mean, really kicking off the game. They were doing that as well. And that's where you look at it and you're like, that's something new that if they can add that, imagine if they were getting, you know, in the, if they were in the upper third, even instead of the bottom third of the league last year, in terms of fast break points add that element, that extra 15, 20 points a game in transition on top of what the offense did last year. And then tell me how good do you think this team is? Like that, that's a gimme, right? That that's like a, if you're getting that, that's just icing on the cake. That's something that, The other team doesn't have a chance to stop you, so why not get a fast break dunk or a layup or something of that nature? If you can add that to an already very efficient offense and you manage to also add defenders, like this team has a very, very high ceiling. So I feel very optimistic about where this team is headed. It's not just that they're going to be exciting. I think they're legitimately turning into uh, perennial contenders for Mm -hmm. sure. And I think... Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, we'll see what they do. They're going to have a max salary slot open this summer. They've handled some of their deals well where they can easily open up a max slot this summer, although Giannis is off the table. I do think maybe that actually keeps their their shopping list, if you will, a little more realistic because we know they can't help themselves with chasing those big fish. Mm-hmm. So now that you don't have like a necessarily super superstar there where you got to go hand out a $200 million deal or some crazy shit, the fact that you actually say like, okay, well, instead of trying to make the one big splash move and putting all my eggs in that basket or most of my eggs in that basket, how about I make this two, these two or three moves over here. And now suddenly look at that. My overall roster is stronger and now we're better than if I just added one more star and then had bit pieces here and there that I had to try and build around it, you know? Right. Definitely, man. Like I said, I, I like how it's headed. I wasn't alarmed, you know, with the first couple of games because, like I said, the Suns, that was a competitive game. We're there in the end. It's the Lakers. We'll definitely see them again. And then to jump out to beat up the Clippers, I, like I said, I don't care if Kawhi Leonard was there, uh, really attacked them and, and, and show our versatility, fast breaking, um, hitting the boards, hitting threes. Uh, that's the type of Mavericks uh, basketball I like seeing. And I want to see that kind of run and gun if we can, um, you know, later in the season. I think we got the players to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people talk about how like, well, it's a, it's more condensed season 72 games versus 82 and the West is so stacked top to bottom. You got 12 teams realistically vying for it out of the 15 for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And so people said like, Oh, and two, you can't consider that an overreaction, especially if we don't know when KP is coming back. But the thing is like Luca KP, when they were both on the floor together and you know, actually had like a rhythm, like both of them had kind of gotten adjusted into the flow of the thing. They were, they were a top four team record wise, win percentage wise in the West last year, before Mm -hmm. things started going a little bit downhill for them, even before KP broke out uh, in January after the Dwight Powell Achilles injury, they were the two seed at one point in the West. And what, you know, kind of dismantled that was a Luca ankle roll that cost him a few games and then KP missed a stretch when Luca basically just got back. And then right about the time KP was coming back, Luca missed some games again. Like it was just like a constant state of flux. Right. And I think it kind of threw off the rhythm for the team a little bit. And so that's how you saw them slide from like the two, three spot in the West down to six, seven. 
And obviously they wound up at the seven seed, but you saw in the bubble, like, Hey, look, look how good they are when they come in fully healthy and realize now I know they still lost in those eight bubble games before the playoffs. They still lost more games than they should have. I think they were like five and three or four and four. I don't recall exactly. I know the last game or two, they didn't even really try because they were locked in where they were. Right. But even still you saw Luca and KP basically both averaging 30 and 10 in the bubble. And it's like that right there, that's something that nobody, no other team can do anything with. That's just the reality. Like death taxes and Luca and KP dropping 30 and 10 a piece on you. Now, if you've got a roster around them, which I think they're much better with now than they were last year. Now you've got a real threat. You've got a real legitimate contender that can be anybody in the West you know, they, they even handled themselves better even without KP. They handled themselves better in the playoffs against the Clippers than I thought they might. I thought they'd be lucky if they got a oh, yeah. game and held in tight for another game to try and even force a game six. So to do that without KP was unreal. And yeah, the Lakers are a bad matchup this year for the Mavericks, whereas last year I thought the Clippers were the ultimate bad matchup. You know, you're a young team. Take the lumps, learn, and keep building and try and knock them off their pedestal. Yeah, and and like I said, that was what that was confidence going into next year because, like you said, nobody was thinking that we were going to do anything. We were hoping like we get one game out of that, um, and to come and bang the way we did with them guys and, and Luca just maturing right before our eyes and kind of taking that step and that next level. And then you have a good draft. You get some good off off season free, uh, you know, uh, acquisitions. Um, and I'm excited. Like you said, we, this can be a team that every single year that was back before. We remember back before we, every year Mavericks was in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we just knew we was in the playoffs. Uh, yep. and we had the little dip. And now I feel like it's coming back to where this team is going to compete for a playoffs uh, position every single year. And uh, be careful when you play them Mavericks uh, because you, we got superstars now. You know what I mean? We didn't yep. have that little – now we got superstars and we got young players to build around. And be careful because when you play these Mavericks now, um, it ain't it ain't like before. Uh, we, we can run up on you different kind of ways. And when we get KP and he's, uh, you know, healthy and balling out, we're going to be a force to reckon with, man, especially down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, Dirk won a championship as the only all-star on the roster taking down uh, – you know, taking down Kobe, taking down Pau Gasol, Brandon Roy, LaMarcus Aldridge, you know, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, LeBron, Bosh, Wade. How many MVPs did he take down on his way to winning a championship with no all-star teammates? Like if you got the roster construction around you, it doesn't really matter. Even the Raptors, when they won a couple of years ago, people were drawing the comparison to the 2011 Mavericks kind of. They had Kawhi. And they, but they had a former all-star as well and uh, Lowry. So it's like, it wasn't exactly the same, but I get what they were trying to, to say. It was a complete team that was just well-built, taking on a, a superstar team that people were ready to crown and had already been crowned in that case. But yeah, that's just, that's just kind of the nature of things. And so if you build smart, which I think the Mavericks are, then you can do something. And if you got the, the right guy, like, you know, Dirk, he's all time great. Yeah. And in that stretch of the playoffs there, particularly after the first round, when you start talking about that Lakers series all the way through the finals, Dirk for that stretch of maybe two months was the best basketball player on the planet. Like could not be stopped essentially like a flu basically. And uh, he, he was automatic. And I think Luca, I think he has the potential to do a similar type run in terms of, you know, being a guy who just in that series, there's nothing that's going to stop him. The difference is, whereas Dirk had that for like the final two months of his just utter dominance of his career, really, even though he continued to be great for several years, he was never that finals performance guy again. Um, right. I think Luca can draw that out for years. And the fact that he's already, you know, he's 21 and he's already as good as he is. Like it's, it's insane what kind of window of opportunity they're looking at here compared to to Dirk who you know he had the two years he got there and the one where he finally put it all together but it's it's incredible what the future looks like it could be for them you got to have some things break right and nothing is guaranteed but I feel really really good about the the roster construction and where it's headed I I think they I you know people might hate on Carlisle when they don't understand decisions he makes. I get that, but I still think they got one of the best coaches in the league and uh, you got the, the most essential pieces 
the the one major difference making superstar and a a very competent quality and former all star in his case and Porzingis as your number two guy. <clears throat> yeah. Well, like I said, man, we I'm ready uh, to see what's uh, going go on, and I hope KP hurry up and get his tail back. Uh, because he he's a uh, addition that we need, and I just hope he stay healthy. That's is my main thing, man. I just hope he stay healthy because we don't need no bumps in the road. We, I see the excitement, um, you know, with our team and 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 what we can really do going down in the season. Even though you know it's back so quickly, um, the fact that uh, you know we need him, and I and I like I said, we you saw last year. And even though we, you know, we played good without him in them playoffs, but you saw how dominant he can be, man, when he really gets rolling. Yep. Um, and, I, dog, I'm excited. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just excited, man. Like, this is the first time in a while that I really, <clears throat> excuse me, been excited about our team because I know I feel like our team can actually do something and, and do some damage. And now I'm not sitting there thinking, like, can we beat these guys? Now I'm feeling more confident. Like, yeah, we can beat these guys. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I would say, uh, you know, there, there's a couple matchups for us that aren't great. Obviously, like I said, last year, the Clippers, I didn't feel great about, but we did better than I thought. Uh, Lakers this year, I don't feel great about. I, I feel like that Lakers team is stupid stacked at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, I pretty much look at any other team in the league and I almost go in expecting to beat them. I almost look at mm-hmm. it and say, all right, you know, it might be a coin toss in some cases, but I typically look at this and say, I, I expect us to win this game. This is a good test for us. I expect us to win this game instead of like, Oof, I don't know how they're going to do this. Hopefully they can find a way to either the other teams just off that night or we're, we have someone dialed in and raining in threes or something like that. And it just puts us over the top in a surprise upset or something. We're, we're not at that point. We're at the point now where your, your expectation shifts a little bit. Now it's like, now that things are coming together, now you start moving up those expectations where you're like, all right, Now we're not even questioning the playoffs and people might look at that and say like, Oh, you shouldn't take that for granted. I understand. But unless things go horribly wrong for you in terms of health, knock on wood, there's no reason this team should not be not only a playoff team, but a team with home court advantage. I think I Mm -hmm. honestly feel that about it. As stacked as the West is, I look at this team and I say health permitting, this is a team nobody wants to deal with. So We'll have to see, man. It's early. It's uh, very early in the year, obviously. We'll, uh, we'll do these as often as we can every, you know, we'll try to do these maybe every week, talk Mavericks and all that. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll keep uh, running it back, see what we can <clears throat> break down and assess. Yeah, well, like I said, dog, I'm ready and I'm excited for the rest of the season. Health willing, that's the biggest thing. Let's knock on wood. Because uh, like you said, in, the Lakers are the Lakers. They're they're dumb, stupid, stacked. We understand that. But hey, there was a David and Goliath. That's all I know. And that story was true. That is true. All right. Well, James, thank you for uh, coming on again, joining me for this Mavs talk here. We'll uh, We'll run it back, try and run it back next week, see what we got here probably sneak in one more of these if we can before i go on my vacation i'll be out Mm. the fifth through the ninth so that's my annual cabin retreat thing where i recharge and refocus so i'm looking forward to it but in the meantime i'm gonna work my ass off to get as much content out there as i can and and you know how we do that's what we gotta do yep all right well thank you guys for tuning in don't forget to like this video drop, drop a comment below subscribe to the dallas prospect check out silver and blue nation as well lots of great cowboys content and you you're actually creating another channel as well right another uh network channel yeah i'm uh actually <clears throat> creating another channel where it's gonna just be basically uh i'm, I'm thinking of a topic i mean a title but it's gonna be whatever goes we're going to hit everything you know um sports entertainment life okay. uh, anything that that people deal with you know on a daily basis that a lot of people can't talk about or you know don't are scared to talk about i'm gonna open this door where it's gonna be a forum where uh, you can be free and we're gonna talk about everything there ain't gonna be judgments and you know it's a lot of things that we need to break down in this society to get better and get closer and that's why i want to open up this channel kind of bridge some gaps with some things that i see in this world and i think it can be helpful for a lot of people down the line Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll be sure to check that out. But until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace. Peace.